this is IBM Museum. And this video took a little bit longer actually even to set up, most probably, than what it's going to take to go through and just empirically check it out. Um, I'm going to get turned around here and just explain the, uh, the layout. And I'm going to be working solely with the PC convertible, that 5140. I have still the, the mall 30 set below this, but I don't even have the uh, the zip drive connected to the PC convertible anymore for this particular test. Um, I can go through and actually do it from the bug that I have on the diskettes. I'm going through and working with those original MS-DOS 4.01. There's a start diskette, and then I have the working diskette in drive B. And I still have the, the video capture off of the CRT monitor. And I do still have, even though I don't have the zip drive, the parallel port zip drive connected up to that back slice, which is the serial and parallel, I'm going to go through and work with more slices. Now, in the 5140 technical reference, the volume two, it actually has a whole bunch of flow charts of how the uh, detection of ports are done. I got thinking that I've got the spare you know, this is the inside, the circuit board that I showed of the serial and parallel serial on that side, parallel on this side. And I got thinking what would necessarily happen if I'd go through and have two of these connected, stacked effectively. And I mean, there's no particular order that they necessarily um, have to be in. They they all have an inlet. You've got to block out for the ones that aren't used. Um, but I'm going to go through and I'll, I'll bring up a couple images of the, uh, the tech ref. And then we'll go through and we're going to actually stack additional module on the back of the PC convertible. So let me go through. Uh, I've got so many sources here, so I've got to go down to my image display. Now, this is for the serial ports. Um, now, it's important to know, note on the on the PC convertible, there can be that internal modem. And I do have that on one unit. I do not have it um, on this particular unit, although. I have a new inbox in it as well, and I'll probably show that eventually or show where that is on the board and show what the layout is. Because an internal modem does take a an IO port address, conventional IO port address of its own. And also, when we're talking PC convertible, there's a printer bigger slice that be, can be connected. And typically, those are so big, I think that those go on the back, and I don't think that they have a an aisle port on the, the absolute back of the unit, of that slice. Um, that's called a portable printer. And here is that image. Um, so it goes through, and by these flow charts, it goes through, and the and the portable printer is actually at the I/O port address of 078, since it's a little bit different. I mean, it's effectively um uh, just another slice that goes on the back of the PC convertible, but there's some other further initialization things like that, and that's called the portable printer. I mean, they expected that to be um, as portable as a convertible, although you have to have line power to run that printer. It doesn't run off the little NICAD uh, battery pack 
uh, that was in the PC convertible itself. But seeing the listing here, and it does list things like mono adapter. Well, the PC convertible doesn't necessarily have a monochrome adapter that had the had a parallel port on it. But there's a couple other addresses. And just it going through these flow charts and talking about checking out if there was more than one serial port um, or a parallel port at both the 378 and the 278 address. And those slices are not adjustable in any form. The only way, and you're not having an adapter, any other adapter that you're able to put on the PC convertible. So for two parallel ports or two serial ports, aside from the internal modem and that portable printer on the back, the thing would be is what happens when you put another slice on there of the parallel and serial port? And I'm sure that these slices, it's not where you can put another uh, CRT slice to get another, um, you know, CGA output, or I wouldn't think so. I mean, um, because that interface chip for the, um, for the CGA screen does respond back to the system and there's there's more interaction between the cpu and that particular slice that you put two on there i just don't know how it would deal with uh with the conflicts and maybe would be more worthwhile to go through and check out but i i wouldn't think it's work it would work as much as with this what i'm inclined to believe now i haven't done any empirical checks yet I'm going to go through, uh, we can get the image capture off the screen. Let's get the built-in webcam off the screen. And I'm going to go through and get on the camcorder again here. And we're actually going to go through and I'll just detach this back slice because I do have the one parallel port and serial port slice that's already on the on the back of this. And we're not even going to go through and connect up anything to these. We're just going to use debug to go through and to see if it recognizes that. This PC convertible is already getting pretty long uh, without that even that portable printer is about even three, four slices uh, long. I've got a few of those. I can demonstrate those eventually as well, too. But let's go through. I will get the video capture up there. Let's get back on the screen here. And let's go ahead and power up the PC convertible. And we do have, might be the thing to do is to, to get that uh, camcorder and maybe reduce the image to be in that lower right-hand corner or something else like that. Um, just so I, I have the video capture here in a position that we can see the screen really good. Okay, I've got power. Let's go through, maybe this unit is set to where if it has a a second slice that it can't work with. That it just refuses to power up. Now I'm not hearing. I went through and I pulled the battery out of this. 
Okay, there we heard. Okay, so we're going to let this power up. In fact, fine, let's go through and do it this way. If it if it wants to um, go through and be a little bit difficult, we're going to look at debug. We'll let it boot. Look at debug. And, of course, um, yeah, it's giving me... Didn't give me the battery warning, but gave me the real time clock because I had this thing unplugged. Okay, and remember that DOS debug is on that working diskette that's in drive B. Okay. So we'll just go through and do a B debug. Okay. We're going to do a dump. We can abbreviate it this time. Four zero colon zero. And we'll just do the length of the single line again. 16 bytes. Okay. So one parallel port and one serial port. The uh, serial port is, those are listed first in that first half of the line and then the parallel ports in that second half. And of course, the if there's an internal modem or the portable printer there, it would be showing those as well. Let's go through. Let's power this off. And I think this is within reason, too. I mean, I wouldn't go through and put three parallel and serial port slices on there. But who knows? Might be a possibility of doing that as well. Yeah, this, I'm going to try this other slice because this is really just acting fishy. And I don't know what condition these slices are in either. This thing could be grounded out or something. I haven't tried to use them. Let's go through and put the other one on. And if it doesn't work, then we know that we have the imperial, empirical test that this doesn't power on with that combination. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it says, uh-uh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test... these two new ones that I haven't. I mean, I've run this one that's on here right now. Ran it with the zip drive. We know it works. So that's that's known good. Just put that on top. And let's take And I mean, if maybe if we could look at the post in that flow chart, we could kind of see what's going on. So there's a single. And we have the machine alive again. So it just looks like two slices. It says, uh-uh, I'm not going to work. So... I was misled by that by that technical reference to believe that you could put perhaps a second slice on there for the par serial and parallel. And that would be about the only slice I would think that you could go through and duplicate the slice being exactly the same. And I'm not talking 
and turtle modem, yeah, that works with the the serial port of the slice. The portable printer works with the parallel side of that slice as well. Uh, we'll go through and we can do some empirical checks with that as well. Um, but I'm going to go through. I mean, I'm pretty sure that this will work. I'm just going to go through and test this last this other slice just so i know that everything going through registers and works i should have brought up the debug and everything else to check the address and all that but So I thought with the um, that the machine in that flow chart would have been able to just go through and detect a slice and 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 just go through and record that um, record that it was at that particular IO port address. I forget which one of these has the block out on the back. I guess it's the one that's on there right now. And we didn't get So that one, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not getting a reaction with this particular slice of the machine powering on. So we're going to say this one is possibly bad. I need to go through and mark them, have some label on them. So let's go through this other one that we did see. Let's hook them in on one side. Okay. Why is the system all of a sudden just being difficult here? Okay, let's pull the power. Put the power back in. Try and power up. I hear the beep. And I finally took that battery out. That it was complaining about. And this actually looks in pretty good shape. I'll, I'll go through and contest this and rebuild it. Okay, set the time and date. I'm going to stay standing up here for this. Since I was going through and moving back and forth. Okay. 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 
Okay. Okay, so that goes through and it works. I'm gonna do a quit. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna power all the way down. I'm gonna pull the power connection. And then I'm gonna go through and put the one that we had the zip drive connected to. I know it works. Reinsert the power. And there we got the beep. We got the, um, so the trick is pulling that power. <laughs> and that actually goes through without any battery in there. That goes through and resets. You know, it's not any resume condition or anything else that the machine is cons uh, confused about. So we have finally <laughs> two slices of those that serial parallel and with it booting. So the video end up taking long i mean the preparation for it the screenshots of that of that technical reference volume two the flow charts in there i think of that that would take longer than going through and empirically testing that i was wrong okay And we don't need a space in there. It it understands that. So despite all that, we stacked. And that's why a lot of, that I didn't want to necessarily have the zip drive involved in that either. To And that's as easy as we can just swap back to the original diskette that we had with the DOS. Um, because I didn't want it to get mixed up of, okay, if there's more than one parallel port, which port am I on, et cetera. So this is, um, it just shows the single parallel port, the single serial. Um, is that just because the address on each slice is the same line? Um, it'd be interesting for the addressing that um, of the similarities in addresses uh, to actually go through and to change that address to code on another slice um, to see if you could stack them like that again. That's just strange of why I have to go through and pull the power plug for it to go through and boot up. But at least it is going through and booting up. I mean, it might even be interesting to, um, to throw the, um, Okay, finally got a beep going through without having to pull the power. Um, it might be interesting putting the, the, that parallel port postcode reader on that, but I wouldn't expect um, that occasion or, you know, or maybe IBM built the system to say, um, for the tech to add on the slice um, to actually add more to the system instead of reducing it back to a base level um, and then plug in that parallel port. Uh, just an interesting thing to consider with uh, 
empirical test. Let me put it that way. And the bug is not wrong. I mean, if it had the second serial port and parallel port there, it would figure it out. I'm just wanting to double check myself. Yeah, it just says so. And that's got to be the similarities in address, a matching address without any other way to go through and um, to do that. But um, so it's you know, might be worthwhile looking this over and seeing that um, address to code, how this does. I mean, it seems like it um, always puts it on those particular I.O. ports, the the 03F8 for the serial port and 0378 for the parallel port. And despite what we have for you know, how does it do the secondary, the 278? Because that portable printer is always at the 078, so it doesn't conflict. And I talked about the monochrome adapter. Who knows with the, this um, floor chart, uh, flow chart of what was intended. That's just strange to me, the way I'm reading the chart, that I thought I'd be able to add a splice on or that IBM would have gone through and it would have been challenging because you have to open up the slice to change the IO port. Who knows? You could you could have a dip switch or something else um, off to the side to be able to modify. You know, who knows where you'd put that? Probably to go through and um, to put it on the facing. areas of the you know either on here somewhere or on the back there's not much room on the sides and you wouldn't want it the port fills up those spots and you wouldn't want to <laughs> i'm showing this i didn't realize what i've got okay don't want that we want camcorder I was saying to put it on, you know, dip switch on these facing areas because there's not much room on the ends there. So, but we did an empirical check and, uh, you know, worked with this to see what we could learn. And, uh, Life is more complete now. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click on that like button, please. And subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. But this is IBM Museum. That's all I have for now. Thank you.